In this episode of my Transit Connect Mark 1 van conversion series, I'm going to be making a mounting bracket for this lithium battery. Now these are pretty hefty items and this is only the, this is the smallest lithium battery that Victron do. So you can imagine if this isn't securely and safely fastened down somewhere in your van and you have to slam on the brakes, it could probably kill you if it goes in the wrong direction. Before we get stuck in, remember to subscribe to the channel, like the video and click on the bell icon so you can get notified when these videos go live. This is an ongoing series and there's going to be loads of uploads over the next few months. Here's what I'm going to be using for the project. Some 20mm angle iron, some 25mm flat bar, and some 25 millimeter aluminium. Here's what I'll be making. As you can see in this drawing, I've got the battery here, which I'll hide for the moment, revealing the frame behind. So this piece here is the aluminium flat bar. That will act as the strap that holds the battery in place. Then I've got these two support pieces they are made out of the steel flat bar and then the rest of it is the angle line. And the way I'll approach this is start off by making this base. So I'll cut the pieces to length and then the side pieces need to be cut so that everything can push up together. Then I'll weld it up and move on to the next part. Now that I got the base pieces cut to length, I need to take the two shorter ones and remove 16 millimeters from each end, but only on the, on the bottom and not on the vertical piece. But we also cut away this bit as well. So I use the thickness of the flat bar, which is also four mil to mark on the back here. So I need to cut away all of that plus this. So I believe this bit requires a much more delicate approach. So with that in mind, I'm going to use a, a hacksaw rather than the angle grinder. And I'll start by following this line. Now, Take that out and put it in this way and then we'll cut down to the line four mil down and we'll need to cut down this line so that's a bit annoying because i've actually got to cut through it might make sense because if I cut on this side of the line, then I'm cutting more away here than I need to. But if I cut away this side or the left side of the line, then I'm cutting through all of that and that will take ages. So I think what I'll do is firstly, I'll cut here. Like that. And that makes, it means I've got to remove a whole lot less material on this cut. Maybe I'll start it off with the angle grinder. Or go through all of it with the angle grinder. Now if I've done that correctly, then I should be able to take one of these pieces, yield around the edge off of the corner so that it will slot in. That is Perfect. Almost time to weld, just got to clean up the metal. Now I'll just pop a couple of welds on the inside as well.
It fits. It's got a decent amount of wiggle room in there. It's a bit rocky, but that's because I've welded it up and now I can't get to any of the welds on the inside. On closer inspection, it would seem that the reason that it wobbles is because the whole thing isn't flat. So I'm going to have to bash that a bit and get it, get it more flat. Okay, this is a lot flatter now. I'm happy enough with that. Now I've got to measure the distance between the top of the base and here. And that is 184. And then there'll be one here and one here. And then there'll be a piece like that over the back. I decided it actually wants to be 183.5. So there, I've got that there. Lovely. So I stick this in the vise, cut it to length. I've got this piece cut. I, I'm going to cut that to the exact length of the bottom. So by putting this in, it will force it square. So it wants to be like this. So I'm just worried about I'm going to put another couple of welds down at the bottom just so it doesn't pop out because that would be really, really irritating. That way, when I put this in, I don't want to be scared that it's going to pop apart like this. There we go. Now, I'm not sure how square it is this way anymore, but I can force that square when I put the diagonal pieces in shortly. So for now, I can put welds here and here and on the reverse. So battery sits in there. That's pretty good. Happy with that. That will push up against the back when it's, uh, when it's square because it's not currently sitting upright. All right, so now I'm just going to mark approximately the length of my support piece. So I'm going to have it, so ideally I just have it up to that corner, but I don't want it to be too long and stick out. So if I do it down a bit like that and draw a line there, then I can cut that and then cut a second one to match the length. Okay, so I just want to make sure that the one that is out of square is done last. Yeah. So I'll do this one first. I know this one's square. So I'm going to pop this one in and then I will measure this distance here so I can mirror it up here and then pull that one in square. See how that bent out of shape just from doing a weld there? It's crazy. Okay, so that's welded. So now I'll measure the distance. Why do quarter of a mil? No one can read it. Right, that is 21 mil. So we're gonna flip this over and put this 21 mil. I need to pull that in, which isn't that easy. I guess I'll do it this way. With the diagonal support pieces attached, I moved on to drilling holes into the brackets where the aluminium strap will attach. To make the process of bending the aluminium more easy, I scored a line with the hacksaw, put it into the vise at that height, and then hammered it down. I'm now going to widen this to 5mm and then thread it to 6mm. Right. 
Perfect. So that is five mil. Oops. There we go. That should be threaded to six mil. The last thing I need to do before painting is attach some mounting brackets and I need to drill these holes out to six mil first. It will be easier to do that before I attach them when I can stick them in the vise. Grind it back. So I'm attaching two on each side and to space them, I'm gonna put one up at the top, flush, flush with the top, and then I'll put the one I'm attaching up next to it like that. So this is where this one will go. I wonder if I can uh, earth it and clamp it at the same time. So it's all welded and ground back. I could use body filler and you know, fill some of these cavities, or whatever, but it's not really going to be seen. I want it to just look okay from a distance. You're not going to ever look at it up close. So now I'm just going to use some black satin spray paint. I'm not even going to bother priming it because I haven't got any. We'll see how it goes. Last thing now, just a final coat of lacquer left over from the step that I did in my van. Let that dry in the sun. Now that all the paint's dry, I can do a final fit. So we'll drop the battery in, like so. Now, one of my design considerations was to lower these side pieces so that it didn't interfere with the BMS leads. So then I've just got to take my M6 stainless bolts and sprung washers and the strap. Drop that one on. And nip it up with the socket. Now this is pretty secure in here. I don't think that's going to move. If it does move slightly, I can always just pack this out underneath just to tighten it a bit further, but I'm very pleased with that. And it's ready to go in the van once I've bench tested the rest of the system. That's your lot for the moment in the electrical department because I'm going to move over to some more work on the bed. But I can show you a sneak preview of what I've got in place down here, which will be coming in a later video. So stay tuned for that. If you watch this far, thank you. It really means a lot. Oh, if you've watched this far, then thank you very much. It means a lot. If you haven't already subscribed, then I encourage you to do so and like the video as well and click the bell icon. That all helps. I'll see you in the next one for some more stuff on the bed.